Welcome everybody to another episode of The Cody Miller Show, the ultimate swimming related show here on the internet. I'm your host, Cody Miller. Thank you guys for joining me as we talk about all things in the world of swimming, all kinds of current events, news, training, race strategy, all those good stuff. Um, first off, before we get started, real quick story. I've been very fearful for a long time of hitting a deer with my car. And it finally happened. Uh, yesterday, it, my car is fine. It wasn't anything terrible or anything. But yesterday, I was driving Allie to the airport, and um, it was really dark outside. And there, surprisingly, are a ton of deer where I live here in Bloomington. By the way, my dogs are eating right now. I'm sorry if you can hear them. Um, there's deer all over the place. Like, I see them on my way to practice in the morning all the time. And I was driving down one of the main roads down Walnut, and a deer just crossed right in front of me. And I slammed on the brakes, and I just bumped it. So I didn't like hit it really hard, but it just shook me and terrified me. And the only reason I said is because I'm facing a window. And as I sat down for the show, that's why the lighting's really good. I'm facing a window. I saw a deer just out in my backyard. Guys, I'm trying to do a show here. Settle down. Oh, anyway, I've got great guard dogs. So that's kind of what's been going on with me. Okay, now we're gonna start our main topics today. And how do you get a topic or a question on The Cody Miller Show? It's easy. All you have to do is send an email to thecodymillershow at gmail.com. That's thecodymillershow at gmail.com. You guys can also send in questions on my Instagram, but the way to get a main topic is to do it that way. And our Lego, please stop barking, buddy. Please stop. Thank you. <clears throat> And our first question today comes from Juanma. I think I'm saying your name right, Juanma, I think. And the topic of the question is the USA Swimming Qualification System. And this is quite an interesting topic. Um, okay, let me pull up your email. All right, so Juanma says, USA Swimming Qualifying System. In the world of swimming, world championships, I know USA Swimming is the strongest and all, but there is no doubt, but I can't understand why for the Olympics you would qualify one month in advance of trials and for world championships one year in advance of one year in advance instead. Does it make any sense? In one year's time, many swimmers who have already qualified may be injured or not fit enough, and then you kind of go on to discuss it. What are your thoughts? Um, first of all, thank you for the question, and this is something that is widely discussed across USA Swimming. Um, to put a little bit more context behind it, for the Olympics, for swimming here in the United States, we host trials 30 days before the games. Um, and we have had a lot of success as a country doing that. That's how we've always done it, that's how we still do it, and it's great. Um, but every year in the quad, the year prior to the Olympics, the World Championship year, um, they qualify the teams, they actually qualify multiple teams a year in advance. And I understand the way they they set this system up a long time ago. So it's they've been doing this for a long time. And, and the reason behind it was a long time ago, the idea was um, qualify in advance so that people don't have to do multiple tapers, so that they could spend the year preparing for a big meet. But swimming has changed and people now swim well on multiple tapers. Um, and as you said in your email, and as like I can attest to, people swim great at Olympic trials and then even faster at the Olympics. So I can tell you personally as a national team swimmer that the majority of us don't like the system. Um, I know that it, the USA Swimming kind of views it as if, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like they've had a lot of success with this current selection process, but you bring up a lot of great points and it's true. I mean, if you select a team a year before the event, you are not going to have the strongest team that, that following year. You just won't. Um, you know, I was, I was uh, a victim of this. This past summer, I had a terrible summer, so I didn't qualify for summer of 2019 World Championships. Um, I did qualify for the Pan American Games, but even then, like, we're not going to have our strongest team a year out because someone who is swimming at the top of their game summer of 2014 may not be at the top of their game summer of 2015. And I've been on the receiving end of this. Like, in 2014, I qualified for World Championships summer of 2014 and then swam at, at world championships in 2015 and i did happen to be the fastest breaststroker for the country even then qualifying a year in advance but i remember at worlds in 2015 we had a relay our 4 by 100 freestyle relay didn't even make the final and we had four guys swimming at u.s nationals like a week prior who went four faster times than all the guys at worlds so like, it's just very evident that you oftentimes do not have the best team. Um, I think there's a few reasons why they do this. Like I said, USA Swimming, it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it. They like to 
qualify young people and then have them you know not have the pressure of going through a trials which is kind of counterintuitive thinking that like you have to go through the pressure of trials for olympic trials um it's it, it, I definitely think it needs to be fixed because there's no reason why you can't just qualify, you know, every every single year um, for a big meet. We've seen that that's the way that it works. But I can tell you that no one loves it. Like even people who qual like like me, for example, like I've made a team a year in advance, and like like I'm on the Pan Am's team and I'm pumped. But you know, there's a likelihood that that's not going to be the strongest team we could have. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, and I think that USA Swimming kind of needs to look at how they, their selection criteria and how they do it. And it's tricky because there's a lot of different teams and swimming is a very weird sport. Um, but to not spend too much more time talking about this, yeah, n nobody loves it. Um, it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. But I mean, and especially for me, it's like short course worlds. Like we have short course world championships in USA Swimming. We don't have our cri selection criteria. Is they just they they pick people based on world ranking from long course times. Like there's really no there's no trials. There's no nothing. They just kind of cherry pick. Um, it's weird, but I think that with the new leagues coming and with swimming growing, I think that things will slowly change. But yeah, it's not it's not super smart. Thank you for the question. Um, I hope that you know that gives you a little bit of an insight into how I feel about it. Um, our se second topic today comes to us from Riley Snakenberg. Berg, I think that's how you say your name. And that topic is, is uh, weight training. I can't tell you guys how many questions I get asked about weight training and strength training and stuff. Riley says, how much do you lift on a normal day in the weight room and what is your dry land routine like? P.S. I'm the girl who yelled Cody at the the Des Moines Pro Series swim me and you said hi. Also, your favorite, you're my favorite Olympian. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I love hearing that. Um, had a lot of people, weird people, screaming at me at that meet, but that was cool. Um, as far as strength training goes, okay, really briefly, everybody's different. What I do is not necessarily going to work with what you or whoever is going to do. Um, but currently I do one dry line workout a week, which is a lot of med ball stuff, a lot of box jumps, a lot of running sprints, a lot of chin ups, burpees, you know, jumping up over chin up bars, doing flips. It's kind of like gymnastics type training kind of, which is super fun. I do one of those a week. I lift three times a week. Right now I'm lifting Monday, Thursday, Friday. Um, but as far as like what we're doing, like thankfully I have a strength coach now who is far smarter than I am because the two years leading up to the Olympics, I did all my own strength, strength training. Like I wrote my own strength program for two years leading into the Olympics and it worked fine. Like, I mean, I did well, but I got to a point where I was like, okay, I need someone else to give me guidance. I need someone else to, to, to help me. And so that I don't, so that this is something I don't have to think about. And I, and I needed something new and fresh and something that was going to take me kind of to the next level. And thankfully we have a new strength coach. His name is Jackson. And he individualizes strength programs for all of our pros here at IU. So we all have a different lifting schedule. Um, so like Ryan Hell, Blake, me, we all, we're in the weight room at the same time, but we're, we're rarely doing the same thing. Um, and I would just say, I mean, sometimes there are days where the, the good thing is Jackson, Jackson communicates with our coaches really well. So on a heavy, super, super heavy day, Jackson will tell the coaches, hey, like they're going to be dead. Like, what are you guys doing in the water? Um, he designs where we go heavy, um, where we back off, where we do our power, where we do our explosive stuff um, in conjunction with what we're doing in the water. Um, I know that's super vague. I, I, I try not to pay too much attention to it. I just do what I'm told, which is what I'm good at, which is what I like doing. Um, but like, for example, today, I mean, we were doing really heavy box cleans, like power cleans from boxes. So full, full snatch, full cleans. Um, and like, we're gonna be really sore. So tonight, this afternoon is gonna be a bit lighter. Um, and that's by design. And then we'll pace the next day. But some some days you just kind of have to muscle through it. Some days it's like, okay, um, Jackson and Ray are like, okay, you're gonna lift really heavy in the morning. We're gonna come in. We're gonna do our best to pace at night. And maybe we hit pace, maybe we don't. But this is kind of where we're at. Um, so it's like this balancing act, right? It's this constant balancing act. And there's no one formula. Thank you for the question. I'm sure I will continue talking a lot about strength training. And our next question comes to us from Clay, I can't pronounce your last name, Narcissenfeld. Narciss, I wrote it down, so I, I butchered it. Um, and that's pre race nerves. Let me pull up your email. Let's talk about pre race nerves. Clay says, Hi, Cody. I was wondering how do you deal with anxiety with races? Because even though I'm a child, I still get so nervous. 
and don't know why. Also, I have Junior Olympics coming up next weekend at the University of Maryland, and as of now, I feel like I'm going to do awful. Is there any way to fix it from Clay? <laughs> Clay, good luck at your meet. I'm sure you're not gonna do awful. Um, okay, as far as nerves go, I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. Being nervous is a good thing. Being nervous means that you care. You should have pre-race jitters, you should have pre-competition butterflies in your stomach. Like, you need those feelings. Like, those feelings are important. And I think, and I, I, don't, I don't have a way to teach people this, but I, I think that you need to embrace those feelings. Um, if you're standing behind the blocks and you're not nervous and there's not something going on, like I, I almost feel like there's something wrong with you because I feel like everybody has that. Uh, I mean, you could be the most prepared, the most confident, check all those boxes, but you should still have that, that nervous feeling. Like it should still be there. Um, I mean, to this day, every time I step behind the blocks, like I want, I want to be nervous. Like I want that feeling. Um, being nervous means that you care. Um, it's, it's all about just channeling that energy and, and honing in on executing the race, right? So as far as you thinking you're going to do poorly, don't think that way. Number one, um, only focus on the things that you can control and you can't control how you feel. Um, you can't control the race circumstances. You can't control who you're racing. You can't control any of those things, but you can control what you do when you step up on the blocks and when you dive in. And so you focus on those things and then you just leave everything else out, right? Like you don't worry about those things. Um, and just kind of understand like, I mean, for me, it's like looking at, okay, I've been training, I've been doing X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z should lead to this. And you know, if you're doing well, you should be constantly reinforcing those positive thoughts that you are going to do well. So like, I believe that, that what, <sighs> Your, your subconscious is so important and your subconscious is constantly checking up on your self-talk, like what you're telling yourself. So if you're telling yourself you're going to do poorly, you're going to do bad, your subconscious is hearing you say those things and then it's more likely to happen. So what, no matter what, you need to have a positive attitude about it. That's why I, I believe that, you know, things might not be going well, but you can't tell yourself that. Like you, you have to, you have to shove those, those feelings of doubt down and sometimes even lie to yourself and um, and just say it, it doesn't matter and then it becomes just mind over matter and I mean and your subconscious is listening to that and then and then your body will respond the way you want it to I don't know if that makes any sense but that is kind of how I feel but pre-race nerves are good good luck here meet I love hearing about that I love when people send me those kinds of emails and that's it for our main topics of the day now we're going on to what I'm going to tend to tentatively call this rapid fire questions. So I'm gonna pretty much pull most of these from Instagram um, where you guys just send in questions and I try to go through you know, a, a good amount. And our first question comes from ntrotter.21 who says, would you like to be a swim clinician when you retire from swimming? Hashtag the Cody Miller Show. Yeah, also if you hashtag the Cody Miller Show, there's a better chance that I'll see it. Um, a professional swim clinician for people who don't know it's someone like a Josh Davis, a guy that I've, you've seen in my vlogs before, a guy who basically makes a living traveling around the country and do, putting on events where people come and listen to him speak. They get in the water, he teaches people drills, he teaches them stroke technique, and you get to interact with him and take photos. And like for me as a young kid to see, to actually get to interact with an Olympic swimmer was like life changing. Like that was like one of the coolest things that ever happened to me. And, um, for me to be able to do that, like I haven't done a lot of clinics, but I've, I've well, I've done a few, um, and they're really fun, and they're, and I like them because I feel like I'm, I'm giving back to all those young kids who, you know, love swimming and like want to be, want to be Olympic swimmers or, or whatever, want to be really good. Like I'm doing kind of what other Olympians did for me as a young kid, and so that to me is like super rewarding. Um, and when I'm done professionally swimming, at least for a few years, I plan on doing a lot of them. Uh, I really plan on doing a lot of them until I kind of figure out what's next. But that's kind of my next step is to kind of be a professional swim clinician. Yeah, I could definitely see myself doing that. Um, anything to keep me in the sport of swimming. You know, if I can make a living doing it, if I can make a living kind of doing YouTube and doing swim clinics and stuff, like that would be pretty awesome. So, I mean, who knows? Thank you for the question. Next question comes to us from Chris Mahler who asks, or who says, I'm going to IU swim camp this summer. Will you be there? Also, do you think swim camps are beneficial for swimmers as young as eight? Yes, Chris, I do feel that way. And yes, I will be at IU swim camp this summer. I think 
I'll be able to make an appearance every single week. I believe there's four or five weeks of IU Swim Camp this year. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's it's a week long camp where people from all over the country travel to, and they do these at all kinds of universities. Like they do these all, all across America, all across the country, but we put on a really good one here at IU. Um, and they the kids come, I mean, it's from all ages, from like ages, you know, seven, eight, 10 to 17, 18 years old. Um, and they, they fly in, they stay in the dorms, which is like right across the street from our pool that we train at. Um, and it's just like a camp, you know, you get up in the morning, you go do swim practice, um, then you get to play with your friends, you know, they play kickball, four square, all, all kinds of camp fun stuff. And every day there's an activity and every day there's an Olympian who comes in and gives the kids a talk. And one day I come in and give the kids a talk and I play games with them and stuff. I was a camp counselor for a number of years when I was in school. Um, but it's really fun. You get to train at the IU pool and our coaches do presentations where they show them training methods and stroke technique and, you know, mental progression and all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited you're coming. Awesome. Anybody else who's coming, say hi. I'll be here. Um, yeah, you can check out the IU Swim Camp. And there's a, and anyone who's interested in swim camp, there's swim camps, you, big universities put on swim camps all across all across the country. And um, I think they're a really great thing. So, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Like, you know, yeah, if you're eight, yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, okay, next question comes to us from Ryan Roop who asks, hey Cody, is tempo or power more important in breaststroke? I would say they are equally important. Holding tempo is critical, but maintaining power is equally as critical. It's 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 about finding the fine line and the balance. And and I mean, there are some days where we train. When there are some sets where Ray's like, okay, I don't care how fast you go, I don't care what it looks like, but I want you to hold this tempo, right? So I've got a tempo trainer and it's beeping at like 1.1 or 1.2, beep, 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 and I've got to hit tempo every time I shoot my hands forward, every time my feet touch, I got to hit that tempo. And then there's, there's other times, guys, please stop. Hey, hey, hey guys, stop it. Our neighbors are doing crazy stuff outside, so the dogs think that something's going on. Anyway, and then there's other practices where um, Ray's like, okay, I need you to be holding lots of power, or sorry, lots of water. You need to be powerful, so, so rate and tempo is not as important. It just depends. I um, hope that answers your question. Next question comes to us from Pablo. Uh, you train with Indiana University, but then you swim in meets representing Sandpipers of Nevada. Yes, I do. He says, uh, I'm from Spain. I'm 15 years old. You're a great example of an awesome, of an awesome swimmer and inspiring person, not just to me, but to millions. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Um, even though sometimes you're too modest, although that's what makes you special. Okay, well, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, keep being awesome. Okay, Pablo, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I train at Indiana. I went to college here, still train here. But when I go to meets, you guys notice I wear a cap that says sand. That's the club team that I grew up swimming on. So Sandpipers of Nevada. Um, I swim for them and it, it, it's kind of like a sponsorship. So um, in terms of, you know, they help me with travel expenses. They help me with, you know, hotel expenses for meets and, and, you know, certain things like that. And in return, I swim for them and represent them. And I also go and visit them a few times a year and I swim practice with them. Um, I speak at their banquets sometimes. Um, you know, I'll do clinics with, like I did a clinic with Josh and them at, 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 you know, for the team so I could interact with all the young kids on the team. So it's kind of like a partnership. Um, and I feel like I'm, you know, those those coaches on that team still today are like really the coaches who built my foundation for what grew into being a successful swimmer. So for me to represent them, I like am super proud of and happy about and I love doing it. And that's the explanation for that. Thank you for the question. And our next question comes to us from Riley Bell. Hi, Cody. This is Riley. I was wondering if you could talk about how to settle your nerves when you're training Oh, when you're trying to qualify for higher championship meets, I am not letting them have an effect on my and not letting them have an effect on my performance. I kind of just talked about this earlier. Also, I love watching your videos; they are awesome. And my family and I are traveling to the Pro Series in Bloomington. I hope you're competing. Yes, I will be competing at the Bloomington Pro Series. Very excited for that meet. That's actually going to be a pretty big meet for us. So. It's gonna be exciting. Um, as far as pre-race nerves and not letting them affect your performance, I would just heart go back to what I said previously. It's like, understand that those feelings are normal and they're a good thing and learn to embrace that feeling. Like learn to be, com it sounds so trivial, but being comfortable when you're uncomfortable is a skill that is not just 
important in our sport of swimming, but it's important in everything, right? Like if you can be calm and cool under pressure, you can accomplish just about anything. And I say that as just a dude who's good at swimming in a pool, so what do I know? But still, I, I mean, I believe that. Um, okay, thank you for the question. Next question comes to us from uh, Surly Dad, who asks, when you and Allie go to the movies, do you share one bucket of popcorn, or does she have her own bag, and you have a team of something bring you oh bold multiple times stuff okay so very very funny um when ali and i go to the movies i always eat an entire bowl of popcorn myself almost every time like we kind of share it's funny ali and i have a hard time sharing things like bowls of popcorn you guys know how much i love popcorn i'm like a popcorn fanatic um when I, when ali and i go to the movies we have a hard time sharing popcorn because we like we get competitive in eating it and i like eat pretty fast so like we, we start like racing each other it's just it's not healthy it's like i'll start eating and she and i'm like eating too quickly and she's worried she's not going to get enough so she starts eating faster and it, it's just like a big joke so like when we're at home we definitely i always when i make popcorn at home that's like my go-to um i always make two bowls because Allie and i like we can't share <laughs> but at the movies always have a big Think of popcorn. That's like that's like my one treat that I do that I do for myself. Thank you for the question. Very funny. Next question comes for us from Alex, and Alex writes, "Please visit Ireland and go to Bangor. It's really great." All right, I will. Uh, true story. Ali, I mean, she's she's Irish. She's of Irish descent, um, but she's always wanted to go to Ireland, and she's never been before. She's always wanted to go to Ireland, and one day we'll go. We're definitely, I mean, that's that's on our list of places to travel to. We're, we're fortunate. We get to travel a lot, um, and we're, we're definitely going to continue traveling. Um, probably in the next couple of years, maybe after the Olympics, I'll take a trip down to Ireland. That would be awesome. And if there's a swim team there that wants to host us, wants a clinic anywhere, like, I'm game for that kind of stuff. Like, I'm in. Like, let's, let's set that up. But once again, this will probably be post-Olympics, post-2020. Thank you for the question or the comment. Um, okay, and the next one comes to us from Leah1981. Cody, I just want to say my 14-year-old daughter thinks you're awesome and has a lot of admiration for you. Thank you. Uh, she loves watching your vlogs, so keep them coming. She currently trains six days a week, including those dreadful early mornings. Tell me about it. She is determined to get her times down and gets frustrated when it doesn't happen, but she keeps going. Thanks for keeping for keeping that inspiration going for the young younger generations of swimmers. Oh, man, I read that comment and it just made me happy, so thank you. I, I love when I get comments like that, either from parents or from swimmers that are just just preaching positivity and, and you know, saying thank you and it lets me know I'm doing something right, right? Like, I'm, I'm somewhat making a difference with people and that's a good thing because I'm just a dude who can swim in a pool pretty well. Um, yeah, as far as not dropping time, uh, I would definitely share with all kids, like, I have gone long stretches of time in, over the course of my career where I did not drop time. And that, that happens, and I think that we lose sight of the fact that other people, other more successful, better swimmers and athletes than ourselves have also gone through the same thing. Because sometimes you look at people and you see how fast they are, and it's like, man, like why, why is this happening to me? And it's easy to just kind of travel down that rabbit hole and get stuck. And then you just gotta pull yourself out and, and recognize, I mean, I remember talking to Anthony Irvin, Olympic gold medalist, multi, multi gold medalist, um, talking about how he'd gone, you know, seven years without going the best time, eight years, and, and, and that's just until it finally happens again. I mean, it happens, and it's okay. That's the nature of our sport. Um, it's kind of it's kind of grueling, those, especially those early mornings. Thank you for the comment. Our next question comes to us from Xander underscore Marsh, who writes, what is the benefit of training with a racing suit versus a, dra oh, okay, just with a racing suit, and how often do you slash should you use them in training? Ooh, I should have made this like a main topic because I could go off on this one. Um, okay, training with a racing suit, I think is super beneficial because when you're in a racing suit, I've talked about this before, but your body is all, always higher up in the water, always higher up in the water. And for us, we try, I try to throw on a, a tech suit, like an old tech suit, um, once a week, once every two weeks, you know, usually it's on like a Wednesday lactate speed set where we do some 50s, 75s, 25s from the blocks fast just to get that feel because oftentimes in swimming, I mean, it's such a grind and you get so broken down and you get so tired that your stroke kind of changes and, you know, your shoulders and elbows start dropping and, and you're lower in the water and putting on that suit allows you, number one, it's a mental thing. It's like, I got a suit on, I'm going to go fast. But number two, it, it allows you to be just be more springy, more poppy and higher up. 
And it's interesting because this is super debatable because our sprint coach, Coley Stickles, love him. He hates wearing tech suits in practice. Like he never has his swimmers wear tech suits in practice. Um, and then our other coaches like Ray and Mike, um, more middle distance guys, like they like it. You know, the, the, the last third of the season of the collegiate season, it's like pretty much once a week they'll throw on a suit. Um, so there's varying opinions about what's good, what's not good. I personally like doing it because um, you know, I, I just like it. I, I think that there's benefit in putting on a fast suit and going fast. But you know, the downside is some people get caught up in, oh my God, this is what I'm actually going with the fast suit on. What if it's not good enough? And then they kind of go down that and you just kind of have to separate yourself from that, I think. Um, anyway, yeah, great question. I could talk forever about that. And that's it. That was our last question today. Okay. Thank you guys for sticking out the 25 minutes with me if you made it this far. Um, I have a few announcements. I'm going to NCAAs next year, next week in Texas. I'm super excited. The women are competing there right now. Um, the men are competing next week and I'm going, you know, me, Blake, and a bunch of my buddies are going to be there. So if you're in Austin at the meet, come say hi. Um, what else is going on? Uh, I'm trying to do more podcasts. I did a podcast with Margo. Finally did a podcast with Margo. It went great. She said it was the most she'd ever talked in her life, which is comical because it was only like 40 minutes long. Um, and she said she was exhausted after, but I'm trying to do more regular podcasts, but this show, the Cody Miller show, I'm working on it. I'm going to try to get better about it. I'm going to try to get through more questions and be more just better about answering these questions. And um, yeah, so every Friday vlogs every single Wednesday, without a doubt, a vlog is going up. Um, <laughs> Hey guys, hey, hey, there's, I don't know if you can hear, but there's stuff, like our neighbors are banging over there, like there's, they're hammering something in, I can hear it, and they don't like that. Puff, come here, come here, it's okay, it's okay, you're a good girl. All right, I apologize for that. As always, make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter, and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please share my YouTube channel. Share my vlogs with your swimming friends. That will help me. The more views I get, the better, the more I can you know, the more I can justify spending more time editing, the more I can justify filming more things and putting out more content, which I love doing. Um, it, it really helps me. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Also subscribe to my podcast on uh, all platforms. You know, you don't have to just listen to it on YouTube and, um, until my next video, I will see you later.